Hi, in this session we are going to learn about the ls command. The ls command is basically used to list the contents of a directory. Without wasting much time, let us jump into the command. Now, let us start the terminal by pressing ctrl alt t. Now, in a simplest form ls can just be used like this, ls without any options. Now, this is going to list out the contents of the directory and you can just observe, okay, these are the various files and directories present within this particular directory. Which directory? Your home directory, right? But now let us say you want to print one file name or one directory name each line, then you can just write ls hyphen 1. So, if you just mention hyphen 1, in one line there will be one entry, okay? You can just see each of the file name or directory name is occurring in one one line, right? Now, if you want to have a look at the contents of a specific directory out here, like for example, I want to see what is present within the C program, or I want to know what is present inside the documents folder, then one way to do it is you can go inside the directory with the help of cd command and you can apply the ls out there. Like for example, I like can just say cd space C program and after that I can write ls, I can see there are two files here. But assume you are in the home directory, right? This is my home directory. Now, I want to see the contents of C program sitting out here, not going inside the directory. Now, I can just write ls C program, right? So, you can just observe. This way, you can see the contents of any directory by specifying the directory name if the directory exists within your present working directory. If it is present somewhere else, then you can actually use the absolute path, the relative path, right? And then you can look at the content. Like for example, please remember that this is my home directory. Sitting here, I want to see the contents of the root directory. Please do remember, ls is going to give me this. ls with slash, slash basically represents the root directory, here you can just see these are the contents of the root directory which has bin, dev and then home and all those things, right? Now you want to uh, see more information about the file, like for example, I just want to know what is the size of the file, I want to know is it a directory or is it a regular file, what are the permissions and all those things, then we have an option called as hyphen L, please do remember earlier we had used 1, but here we are using L, so L stands for long listing. And here you can just see it is giving you a lot of information about each of the files. Like, okay, it has multiple columns. The first column basically, okay, this one basically tells you the type of file and the permissions what we have, right? And then the second one basically tells you about something called as the hard link count. And the third one basically tells you the user and fourth one is the group. Then this fifth one is basically your size of the file and this section gives you the time when the file was last modified and then your file name, right? Okay. Now, from this you can just observe, okay, the first column, if you see hyphen, it is a regular file. But if you see D out here, it means it is a directory file. Similarly, we can also have other symbols out here other than hyphen and D. We can have P for pipe file and then we can also have b for block file which will be looking at it in the later sessions right okay and then the next information out here in this first column except the uh, after the first character now this information gives you the access permissions you it can be grouped into a combination of three three characters right wherein the first three characters this section basically talks about the access rights for the owner, the user who has created this particular file. The next things, okay, basically, okay, this three thing basically tells you the uh, access rights for the group members, the users who are fall under the same group as the present user. And then the next three characters out here basically represents the access rights for others, people who are not uh, within the same group as that of the users, right? We will try to uh, look into more detail about this, how do we change the permissions, what we can perform if you have the read permission or write permission in an, okay, detail in a separate session, right? And even this uh, information about this one or two we called as the hard link count, what exactly is that, we will also be looking into the next sessions. If you observe here, the file names are listed based on alphabetical order, 
wherein it starts from A and then going up to Z, right? Now, in case if you want to display in the reverse order, what we can do it is we can just write ls hyphen lowercase r. You can just observe it is giving you starting from v then s. You can just observe this, okay? And please do remember if you mention it in this way, it's going to go out with the okay column wise, right? Or if you want to have a long listing, then you can just write l with r. You can just observe. I can combine two options: l for long listing, r for in reverse order. You can just observe this, right? Now, if you want to arrange this based on the size of the file, then we can just write ls hyphen l, okay, to make sure that I get the details of uh, size of the file. And I would also like to use s. Remember here, s should be uppercase. Now you can just observe the file with the highest size or the largest file is upper appearing first, and the smallest files are appearing at the last. Now, if you want to again do print this in the reverse order, you combine this R, any order, L S R, L R S, any order, right? In this smallest file is appearing first here. Now, by default, L S does not display some files. What are those some files? Those are hidden files, right? But if you want to have a look at those hidden files, then we have an option called as hyphen A. A stands for all the files. You can just observe. There are some files which are displayed here, which are not displayed when you just mention ls, right? So what are these files which are hidden, right? These files basically begin with dot symbol. That is the way. Okay, uh, files are created on Linux platform. If you don't want this to be uh, visible, if you want to make it as a hidden file, you just okay begin the file name with dot followed by the file name. If you want to see the hidden files, then we can just write ls hyphen option A. If you want, you can also use the long listings also together. There is another very important information associated with every file, and we call it as inode number. Now, if you want to have a look at the inode number of every node, we can just use ls hyphen i. This will only give the inode number and the file name, right? So you can just observe this. But if you want to have the long listing, you can just write i l or l i. You can just observe that. Okay, there is a number called as okay inode number associated with every file. So we'll try to look into this okay in more detail in our later sessions. If you want to list only the uh, directories, not the files in your present working directory, then ls is not sufficient because ls will give you the contents of the files and the directories if you want to only list out the directories and not the files we have an option hyphen d along with that we need to put star and hash this will only give you the directories it will not give you the files right this way you can just observe if you want you can just try to use ld out here right you can just observe it's going to list only the directories right so here we have uh, studied the most commonly used options along with ls. Now, there are many more options which can be used along with ls. So, if you want to know more about ls, okay, you can just use the band page and try and un okay, understanding the various options and explore it. Fine. Thank you.